Good morning, noon, evening or night, depending when you're watching this video. My name is a legend and welcome back to World of Tanks and the MBTT replay series where we feature the best replay from the MBTT clan for each and every major patch from now on. And this time it is me once again, this time playing in my Object 705, the tier 9 back turreted Russian heavy tank. And I am playing on Mannerheim lane and going towards the heavy tank flank. Not really my favorite flanks on well, any particular map, because this flank is very hard to push further through. Once you have conquered it, it's very hard to go further towards the enemy base because there is a lot of crossfire, a lot of camping spots that you can be countered at. However, recently I'm respecting this flank a bit more because even though I know that it's not easy to push further through, just securing the flank and potentially return towards the base is enough for me to uh, accept this flank as a position that needs to be conquered and then observe the situation and how to move further. But in the meantime, I am going to close quarter brawl against these two heavy tanks, the Object 260 and the Eve 75 for a bit. And the first thing that I really did correctly in this situation is just minor adjustments to my hull so my inner plate was harder to get hit. And then of course side scraping because that is what this thing does best so hiding the underplate and side scraping further onwards and trying to fire at the weak spots of the enemy tanks and you saw right there that i was timing the bouncing of the e75 when he showed most of his underplate because in modern day world of tanks if you move quickly forwards and backwards your tank actually jump jumps a bit, bounces a bit forwards and backwards as it counters the momentum of your weight. And that way, on just a fraction of a second, the underplate of the E75 was pretty much not visible and other times it was just, it was visible enough for me to hit. So also redirecting my focus on the 260 instead of the IS-3 because he presented an easier weak spot and he is the more dangerous top tier tank. Although it will become it will become apparent that well he's not going to be that dangerous this game as I have put already in second shot into his tank. However, after getting hit by the IS-3 and firing back at him, I slightly backing off. Well, it's a low tier heavy, but he's quite knowledgeable in his aim for my weak spot. So I am actually a bit more careful around the IS-3 than I am around the Object 260. And once again, slightly adjusting my hull here and there. So this time the IS-3 did not penetrate his shot and I shut him down. Showing how strong this tank is when you are able to correctly hide your inner plate like that. Not how my platoon mate is doing it right here. He should also have side scraped. A phase one is actually better on side scraping as well as just well, turning around the corner pretty much at a perpendicular angle. And the object 260 just keeps presenting me with his weak spot. So yet another shot into the object 260. I think that's number four already. And he is right now a one shot. So at this point, I noticed that the 60 TP on my team missed the 260. So I wanted to help him out as quickly as possible. So that 260 doesn't snoop off more of his hit points. And I have finished off the 260. And now helping out the 60 TP against the E75. Luckily, the E75 is too occupied focusing on the 60 TP. And that way we both survive because we are both engaging the E75 at the same time. So now I am presented with the choice to push through or return up the flank. But, well, if you see the current situation of the battle, it's quite easy to conclude that I can just push through with the amount of enemies left on this flank. And just like that with a final shot at the Scorpion G, moving further along. But the rest of my team is quick enough to dispose of the rest. I'm left with 5300 damage in this victory. 
So this battle was of course an ace tanker for dealing 5300 damage and blocking nearly 4000 damage. Giving me the steel wall medal and the high caliber as well. This amount of damage is also greatly thanks to the object 260 which I've hit actually 5 times while he bounced me 5 times. I pretty much disposed of the entire object 260 just by knowing when to focus him and knowing when he was presenting me with his weak spots. Experience wise it gave me a decent amount of experience, I disposed of an entire tier 10 tank after all and alongside with some bit of profit, even without premium I would receive a nice amount of credit profit, even though I fired 8 premium shells. So this battle presented a lot of brawling tricks, little adjustments on the hull which made my weak spots harder to hit and analyzing enemy micro movements and timed my shots so that I would have the largest weak spots to be able to hit. Also focus fire on the object 260 which funnily enough made himself more of a vulnerable target than the bottom tier IS-3. And lastly helping out teammates to reduce the damage that they take by killing enemies as soon as possible. Even though I think my 60 TP would have survived it anyway, just getting in there and being more present at the front line next to the 60 TP made his survival rate a lot higher. So that has been the end of this video, hope you enjoyed it, liked if you learned and I will see you next time. Laters!